All right, Nation, you're about to listen to a video that I recorded. And um, it, just quick disclaimer, dude, it, you're, you're not going to see the actual video like you are now. Uh, the recording came out and uh, my, well, basically, I had a blind moment. It's what I call my blind moments. I, I cut my head off. So I'm just going to put a, an overlay over it. It's going to be podcast style. You'll hear me mention in this video often. Um, obviously, it's not going to look like a video because I have the overlay on it. I just want to throw the disclaimer out there that you guys know. Uh, I just believed in what I said, so I want to keep it. And there's no retakes. When I, when I do my videos, I always speak from my heart, man. I, I don't script nothing. It, it, it all just comes out like I'm doing right now. So, you know, this is where we're at. So, you know, enjoy this v podcast, I suppose. This, this was supposed to be a video. It is what it is. The message is still there. Please, again, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. Give me your thoughts. I want to hear your feedback. There's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. We're all masters of our own opinion. Enjoy the podcast, the video cast, whatever the hell it's supposed to be. Either way, enjoy it, and I'll talk to you guys soon. The Derek Carr Divide, today on Night of the Shield. Welcome back to another edition of Night of the Shield. I'm Jason, AKA the Oakland Knight, and today we're going to talk about the Derek Carr divide. But before we get started, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be updated every time I drop another video. Also, I wanna give a big shout out to my boy Graf, who hosted a show a couple of weeks ago, helping me raise money for my foundation, my nonprofit organization I work for, Valley Center for the Blind. We raised $800. So Nation, much love to you, much respect to you for helping me with my cause. You all know I'm legally blind, so it truly, truly means a lot that we came together and raised some money to help my nonprofit, the organization I work for, Valley Center for the Blind. So Graf, Nation, much love. All right. With all that fun stuff out of the way, let's get into this Derek Carr divide, man. It's it's pretty crazy right now. It's pretty crazy right now. Derek Carr has become his own spectrum, right? And I deal with spectrums on a daily basis. On one end of the spectrum, you have the people that I guess are calling them Kardashians or whatever, the people that are banging the table, saying that Derek Carr is the future, Derek Carr is the GOAT, Derek Carr is an elite quarterback. On the other end of the spectrum, people are saying, Derek Carr needs to go, we need to get rid of him, we need to move on, we need to draft for the future, we need to go you know, get a free agent for the future, what have you. Now, this has kind of been my MO for years. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm that type of guy that does not mind cannonballing in right in the middle of the situation and trying to shed a different perspective or a different understanding of what's happening here. Because this is this is what I've already figured out by listening to everybody's videos and doing all that jazz that I do uh, is that I don't I don't see like when I when I watch people that are defending car, I don't see anything wrong. They're not saying anything wrong. People will jump their ass and say, oh, you're making excuses. I don't, some of them are, okay? Some some of the things that they're saying, some, not all, some of, it is an excuse. But it's only an excuse if your narrative is the fact that you want him gone. If you want him gone, then everything's gonna be an excuse. There's a lot of facts that these people are talking about that make Derek Carr a great quarterback. I'm sorry, is, I'm not, now I'm gonna rephrase that because I want everybody to listen closely. They are bringing up facts that make Derek Carr a great quarterback. There's a difference between being a great quarterback and an elite quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback. Like, you know, elite usually makes you a Hall of Famer most of the time, but I digress. Think about it just a little bit, right? Because a lot of people that do not want Derek Carr to be the future of this franchise, I mean, they, they were banging the table for him at the beginning of the season. And that, that point has been made. And that's not an excuse. That, too, is a fact. Now, for all of those who have been against Derek Carr for the past three years, I get it. You guys have been wanting him gone for a very long time. And, and I'm sure you have your reasons. And that number one reason is also a fact and not an excuse. If you look at the win and loss record, you know, hey, it speaks for itself. He is not winning games. 
period. He's only drove us to the playoffs one time, and that was in 2016, my last season I covered the Raiders, and I actually left right, right, right before he got hurt. Now, let's, let's take a little deeper look at how this could even be possible. Why is there such a big divide? You'll hear that last week against the Washington football team. He missed wide open wide receivers. Fact. But again, not every quarterback is going to hit every open receiver in any play. Watch, go watch the rest of the games. There's other quarterbacks, elite quarterbacks, proven elite quarterbacks that have done the same thing. Um, right now, everybody's looking at Derek Carr under a microscope. Is it fair? That's that's the conundrum. Is the slack and the heat that we continue to give Derek Carr, is it fair? Is it, is it justifiable? Or is the team itself in such disarray that the focus falls on him because he's the quarterback? Man, ever since I, I was a little boy, I've always understood that if there's great success on a team, they give credit to the quarterback. If there's, uh, you know, the team sucks and they're playing horrible, that goes on the quarterback. It's been a known fact. But honestly and truly, is it all Derek Carr? It's not all Derek. And that's why I said there's truth on both sides. You can make the case for him to stay and you can make the case for him to go. It all depends on your personal perspective and what narrative you want to sell. If you want to sell the fact that he should be gone, there's enough evidence to make your case. If you want to you know, use the narrative that you want him to stay and be the future of this franchise, there's enough evidence there that'll show that it makes sense to keep him and have him stay. It is what it is. I'm going to give you just a little snippet of what I think needs to happen in certain different scenarios in the next segment. All right, Nation, let's get into this. The first thing I want to talk about is Derek Carr's offense, the offense that he runs. Now, statistically, he's improved every single year under John Gruden. His stats don't lie, right? Those are not excuses. Those are facts. The statistics show that he's improved every season. And right now, he's top two in the NFL in yards. So to me, that erases the argument that he does not have enough weapons. Fact. Now, backing that up, I will say this for the other side. It's still a team sport. It still takes all 11 to play together cohesively at the same time to be good, to be great, etc. And we don't see th that happening. And especially because the, the, the start, the core, and this is a fact too, this is another thing that's not an excuse. The fact that the offensive line, especially early on in the season, was not good. Not good. I don't care what anybody says. Come at me hard in the comment section all you want. Especially that first half. I would say probably maybe the first six games, straight garbage. Straight garbage. That offensive line, horrible. You cannot have any type of offensive rhythm and flow when you cannot trust the line in front of you and, and expect you know good results on the outside, inside, running game, passing game, you name it. It ain't going to happen. Just not going to happen. Now, for the other side, I will say that they have improved, especially since they moved Leatherwood inside. They've improved, but they're still not great. They're still not where they need to be for us to be an effective offense. It's still a problem. That's why you'll hear most people, if not all people, say one of the biggest needs we need at this moment is a right tackle, which again is a fact. Right tackle is probably one of the number one things that we need in the going into the offseason, hands down. I don't care if it's Derek Carr back there or Mariota back there or some quarterback we draft or one that we pick up in free agency, which we'll get into eventually anyway. Now, that is the core. The same reason it's the core of our defense, right? We play that much better. On, we're not even a great defense. I'm not even going to get into the defense, but I would just say our defensive line is improved and that's what's helped us become better more efficient on defense if that's what you want to call it our receiving core is just fine it was just fine rugs played at a high level it raised the level of the rest of that offense he even helped out waller and i've i've said this on, on graph show when we did the the fundraiser 
you know the 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 fact that Derek Carr was able to hit Deshaun Jackson on a crossing pattern and really showed that he still has the speed to take the top of the defense off really fit made Carr feel more comfortable Carr has said it thousands of times if I trust you I see it in practice I'm going to do it in the game now I don't believe in that philosophy. I think it's it's kind of an asinine thing to say. I mean, this is your guys. You have no choice whether they do it in practice or not. If you got to go out there and make a play, you got to go out there and make a play. That's one of my number one problems that I have with Derek Carr, right? But philosophy-wise, getting back to staying on target, I got to stay on target here. I'll, I'll I'll go off on a tangent. That's why I'm gonna break these up into segments because I'll I'll get off on one boy. But let me tell you, scheme-wise. Scheme-wise, Carr played efficient under Gruden. You remove Gruden out of this, we can say what we want. I was, I, I do not like this offense. I, do, I think it's outdated. And it's only a problem now, and a serious problem, because Gruden's not here. You put Gruden calling plays, and I know a lot of us hated the fact the way that, we didn't like the way Gruden called plays either. But again, we're not head coaches of this football team. This is not our designed offense. This is his designed offense. So regardless of how Olsen knows the offense, how Carr knows the offense, Gruden's already, always, always been the orchestrator of this offense. So he calls the plays. He gives, not only gives Derek Carr the play, he gives Derek Carr the audibles. It's Derek Carr's job to decide what audible to go to. And I, I think that element is extremely missing in Olsen's play calling because Gruden knew exactly what kind of plays to put in for audibles. Now, Carr should have a, very, a well good grasp of this as well, but for some reason, he's not executing. I, this is my other knock on Derek Carr. It seems, and I, this is not factual either, and this could be an excuse for the other side, but to me, it doesn't seem to me that, that, that Carr can stand on his own. Like, Carr's a corporate guy. And there's nothing wrong with being a corporate guy. I mean, these are your bosses. You do what you're told. You go out there and you play the football game. That's what I see Derek Carr do, right? Derek Carr will listen to whoever his offensive coordinator is. He, he's a play by the book guy. Hey, that's my boss. He tells me to do this. I'm going to do this. I have my audibles. I have my check downs. This is what I'm going to do. Derek Carr got to get a little bit of that Russell Wilson in him. And that's something that we'll talk about later on down the road, as well as Aaron Rodgers, who said, no, I don't like this. You know, he's got to stand up for himself and say, hey, this is what works for me. And what works for Derek Carr was that Bill Musgrave offense. That Bill Musgrave offense fit Derek Carr. I heard someone say that, oh, you know, sh shotgun, spread everything out. That doesn't work in the big leagues. It doesn't work in, in the, in, you know, they said the same thing about the option. Okay. Uh, I see us go to it. And, and when we go to it, he succeeds. Now, granted, and I will say this, I mean, you got to get somebody who's innovative. This is the whole point. It's not to sit there and run the spread offense every time you go out there and, uh, and, and, and run a play. That's not the idea here. But that should be one of the biggest cores of our newly designed offense is the ability, if we're keeping car, for him to spread it out, get in the shotgun, spread it out. Now, that's going to take certain kind of weapons. And one of those guys that we keep talking about and it keeps coming up is Devontae Adams. Now, we're going to get into that down the road, too. I only want to say one thing about Devontae Adams, though. For anybody out there that thinks that it's just as easy as going into the offseason and grabbing Devontae Adams and all of a sudden this offense is, is one of the number one offenses in the league, you're wrong, right? I mean, granted, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are doing their thing in Green Bay. They've won like eight or nine games. I think it's like eight games. And, you know, they're doing well. But just adding Devontae Adams to this football team is not going to be the answer. I mean... They're not, they're not, they're not killing it over there, right? I mean, they they play well, but both of them want to leave. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? Anyway, so don't don't think that getting Devonte Adams just changes things, right? It still has to be the scheme. It's always going to be about two things: the scheme and the players. And we all know we drafted horrible, especially in the early rounds. We're a horrible draft team, period. Which brings me to my number one point that we're going to get into in this next segment. All right, let's go ahead and get into this last segment that I want to talk about when it comes to the Derek Carr situation. And that is the overall philosophy of this organization. Now, I definitely going to want to do a deeper dive and, and try to design something that helps me break this down piece by piece. I talked a little bit about it on Graph's channel. Uh, I want to put it together in a different format. 
and kind of really break it down to what I think is wrong with this franchise, period. And um, it, it's it's not the excuse or has, you know, it has some to do, this, this, this can't be Derek Carr's out, okay? But it does play and help everybody. This is a, this is pretty much an excuse, if you will, and factual for all 53 people on this football team. Okay, uh, including our defense, including you know Gus Bradley, I guess. Uh, you know, not not so much Olson. I, I think that guy <laughs> that guy's garbage, but uh, he always has been. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, we didn't go out and get this guy. He was he was the quarterbacks coach in essence he was he was that guy that could relate to car him and car have a relationship they get along that's kind of the connection there uh, beyond that i mean he shouldn't be in the position right and and that's and that's the other thing i mean gruden was this high powered figure you know he was the face of the franchise and i don't believe that the coach should overshadow the quarterback uh, once that really started to become the argument between Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, things started to get a little little off, right? Um, but I digress again. We don't draft well. There's there's a difference between saying we don't have enough playmakers or having the right playmakers to fit the system or to fit what Derek Carr needs uh, out of a system. And and I and I think if I personally had my biggest knock on Derek Carr, or at least the narrative of Derek Carr that you hear from other people. I don't believe it's it's gotta be solely on, and I know there's gonna be people that fully, you know, hear me out, but I know there's gonna be people that are gonna disagree with what I'm gonna say, but I don't believe that it's necessarily the organization, organization's full responsibility to make sure that the quarterback has every piece elite. It's impossible, guys, the like salary cap, uh, not understanding, you know, not everybody that gets drafted in, in the first round is a home run hit. And that's why we have the word bust. And we've had plenty of ours in our organization, right? Uh, at some point, your quarterback, the face of your franchise, the heart of your team, needs to have the ability to raise the level of everybody around him. He's the one, I mean, he even sparks the defense, right? He could even have the power to spark the defense if he's that guy. I'm sure, you know, the defense plays a little harder for Tom Brady or for Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson. And I'm not saying that our defense don't play for Derek Carr, but I'm saying if they could take more chances to try to make more plays, if they believe the offense is going to go down there and, and have the ability to score the ball, right? They have to play off each other. I think where we're at right now is both offensively and defensively. It's all on, they feel like it's all on their shoulders. It's either all on the offense or all on the defense. We're not a complete football team. You know, you'll see some teams that believe in themselves on both sides of the ball be able to make more plays because they know if they screw up, they got a good offense that's going to come in and make up for it or vice versa. That's the kind of mentality I'm talking about. That's the kind of team we haven't had in years. Now, what's that have to do with Derek Carr? Well, in all honesty, it plays to the side of the spectrum where maybe maybe Derek Carr is not the answer because we need a guy that can raise the level of this football team to give this team confidence. We've seen it in the past. So, you know, to kind of help the other side out, it's not that he can't do it. The philosophy needs to change. It's all about our culture and where we're at. We keep finding ourselves stuck in the past. We're the Raiders of old. We're never, we haven't been in years the Raiders of new. The last time we were the Raiders of new, it was back in 1998 to 2003 when this did a whole cultural change. And for the first time ever, Al Davis gave a, a head coach the power to bring in a different style of offense and a different kind of philosophy to this football team. And that was, yes, once again, John Gruden, we know it, right? We were a high powered offense. We were the number one offense in the league. Rich Gannon became MVP. The West Coast offense and John Gruden's version of the West Coast offense was a hybrid at the time, right? It was really like the, the word, the verbiage, the mix, the mixed motions and all that kind of stuff. That, that, was, that was new, that was fresh, that was hype. Like people were, people had to adjust to what Gruden was doing. That's old school now. You know, running that style of offense now without not not much changes to it is old school. People are figuring out. People are counter counter attacking that. 
It doesn't make any sense to have that style of offense in today's NFL. I talked about it on our Graphs channel when I talk about Andy Reid. Andy Reid's a guy that is one of the oldest coaches in the league, but he continues to make changes in his franchise to stay with the times, right? He keeps things fresh, young. Is the answer having a more mobile quarterback, having a quarterback that can run? I've always been against it. I've always been against it, right? Because most of the time, and it's, it's gotten better over the years, you know, a running quarterback always thinks to run first and not throw first. It's always been my way of thinking. If you look even at Kaepernick, even Michael Vick in his early years, until he got older and slowed things down, he tried to be more of a per precision passer. But I, I'm, I'm talking solely about you know, a quarterback like Russell Wilson, who has the wheels and the ability to do it when he has to, but he's always keeping his head up Phil. He's always looking to pass first. I like that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, a guy that makes tons of plays outside of the pocket, a lot like Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes' best skill set, his ability to throw the ball from anywhere in the pocket in any weird angle and see the field always. He's always can see, he sees the whole field all the time, no matter if he's scrambling, going backwards, sideways, Hell, even upside down, that guy just seems to get the ball out of his hand and into someone else's hand. So, on his team. So, again, it, to me, it really comes down to philosophy. Uh, and it starts with Mark Davis. And, and, that, and that's where we're going to go moving forward, guys. So, uh, here, I'm going to wrap this up because I don't have time to get into Mark Davis and start working my way down like we're going to in the future. This video is solely based off one thing and one thing only. Look. It don't matter if you're uh, a Derek Carr supporter or a Derek Carr uh, uh, non-advocate, right? Whether you want to keep them or whether you want to get rid of them, that's irrelevant to me, right? Because at the end of the day, none of y'all wrong, to be honest with you. It really comes down to philosophy, right? And in my personal opinion, before we get out of here, I will say that Carr is sitting in a position where he at least has an opportunity to have one more year, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that once we start breaking it down from top to bottom but we all got to stop fighting and acting like if, if you don't believe in, in someone else's opinion that you're stupid and you don't know what you're talking about because that is the most in, unfactual thing about this whole argument because both sides have legitimate points and that's always been the conundrum of Derek Carr is you know you love or hate him I mean the guy has the skill set he doesn't always put it together, so it don't matter what side of the spectrum you're on. Nobody is essentially wrong. Nobody really is essentially wrong. The idea is if you're going to run an offense and the quarterback's always going to be the face of your franchise, you need to put your quarterback in a position to be the best six because that, that's the heart of your football team. And it doesn't matter what Carr can do good, whether or not he can run a Gruden system, which he's proven he can run a Gruden system. But if we're going to sit here and make the argument that that system is outdated, it's no good, then it, it's dead in the water. That has nothing to do with Carr. It's everybody just knows that offense. It's really predictable. It's really vanilla. We know we're going to try to run the football. We don't push the ball. I mean, we've been doing more of it. This season, pushing the ball downfield, that's why Carr has the numbers he has and leads the league and passes down the field. But it's not designed in a way that Carr needs to be successful when he does it. Spread it out. We've seen it in the last few weeks when he spreads it out and he's feeling confident and, and you know, the offensive line, we have the weapons to run that spread. We have the speed, we have the hand catchers. We haven't all put it all together, but we can't worry about whether, whether or not Waller's on the field or not on the field. You gotta use what you got. Foss Moreau can make plays. Hunter Renfro makes plays. Edwards, even though he's not that number one, maybe he's not even a number two, he still has the ability to go up top and make plays. I saw Jones last week against the Washington, Washington football team break the top off the defense. He needs to make those plays, but he has that ability. That's why he's always been kept on his team. He's a speed guy too. We saw Deshaun Jackson. I don't think I don't think Carr had the confidence in it because of the calf thing. I, I don't know what was happening last week when it comes to Deshaun, but this is a dis, it's become once again a dysfunctional franchise within the the means of what we have there. Basaccia is a team manager. He's not he's not he's a good leader. I'm not saying he's not a good leader. Uh, I just read a report before I jumped on here about you know Basaccia is not really taking the reins and doing what he's supposed to with this football team. So uh, moving forward, you know going down the road. You know, we're, we're going to break this team down from top to bottom. So basically, stop the infighting. It's stupid. It's stupid. Look, at the end of the day, 
the new coach is going to determine who's right in this argument. And even then, that doesn't that doesn't make you right. It's not going to make you right. None none of this is right. Talk about the Raiders the way that you want to talk about the Raiders. Speak your mind. Be the master of your own opinion. Own what you have to say. Right? If you're going to say Derek Carr needs to go, then damn it, Derek Carr's got to go. You stick to your guns. You continue to make your point. If you say Derek Carr needs to stay, keep pounding that table and say, you know what, Derek Carr needs to stay, and you keep bringing your facts. And just research your facts, man. Make sure that it doesn't sound so much like an excuse, right? Because some of it can be taken as an excuse. Like, you know, him not having uh, the right kind of uh, offensive weapons, that's become an excuse at this point. I, I personally don't believe in that. If you want to talk about the offensive line, the scheme, the way it's being called, him being, you know, too much of a corporate guy and, and, and not taking the reins of this football team himself and just doing what he needs to do to be successful, because Carr knows. Carr knows, right? Carr knows what he needs. Carr knows what he likes. Carr wants to be back there in that shotgun and he wants to start slinging that ball. That's what Carr does. And I've seen other teams do it. I've seen other teams run the ball out of the shotgun. It buys them more time, especially when he doesn't trust his offensive line. And I think that helps his mentality. That's just my personal take. You could rip me in the comment section all you want, but Carr needs to be that dude in shotgun, spread offense. Yes, he needs to be under center. You don't run every play from the shotgun, but primarily he needs to be in the shotgun, spread it out and be a gunslinger. That's who Derek Carr is. Now. That's so, solely different than saying that's what I want this offense to be moving forward, right? <laughs> you know, I whatever, whoever coach, because we don't have control of that, remember that, right? Whoever the new head coach is, whatever their offensive philosophy is going to be, is going to really determine whether or not Carr is the answer. And I'm just hoping at this point, and this is, I'm going to end it here, y'all. I'm just hoping at this point that that new coach doesn't come in and think that he that Derek Carr has because Derek Carr has a lot of talent he's got a strong arm he's got an accurate arm he has a lot of the intangibles that we're looking for in a quarterback I just hope that this new offensive philosophy is not going to try to make Carr something he's not again nobody but Bill Musgrave has given him the opportunity to run his offense and that was a year that everybody admits that he was lighting the league up MVP candidate when he when he hurt himself so think about that as you're making your argument moving forward. Again, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you can be updated every time I drop another video. And smash that like button, please, man. Smash that like button. Let's get this channel live again, because this, this, this shit's got me hot, man. This shit's got my blood flowing. I want to break this team down from top to bottom. I'm talking from Mark Davis, down to the coaches, down to the players. We need to figure out a new philosophy a new culture for this football team. We're in a new town, state-of-the-art stadium, and we're running an old-school football team. We need to move forward, y'all. That's the bottom line. Anyways, love you, nation. Thank you once again for help supporting the Valley Center for the Blind. Much love and respect to you. And until next time, stay Raider strong.